Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my quick review of the new Sony A7R Mark V full-frame mirrorless camera. Like the A7R 4 it retains the 61 megapixel full-frame BSI CMOS sensor that remains at the resolution peak of for full-frame cameras. It also retains the limits of a 10 frame per second continuous shooting, but what has radically changed is the amount of buffer depth available. Where previously you could fill the buffer in about 68 raw shots, you can now shoot up to nearly 600 raw shots, making this a much more flexible camera. Add to that the improved AF tracking that now has the AI learning that allows it to track a variety of subject, subjects with much more intelligence than before, and you have a camera that is suited to a wide wide variety of photography pursuits. The amount of phase detect AF points has improved from 567 to 693. Also interesting is that when in APS-C mode, which is a 26 megapixel resolution, you now have a total of 567 phase detect points available rather than the 325 that were available on the A7R Mark IV. Byproduct is that this is a camera that focuses very well, whether in full frame or in APS-C mode. There's also a newer imaging processor that helps with the AI learning for superior tracking and you can now track subjects like humans, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, and airplanes. Also improved is the in-body image stabilization, which was rated up to five and a half stops on the A7R Mark IV, but is now rated up to eight stops, which is an incredible improvement. I found that in real world use that that uh, in-body image stabilization is definitely improved and improved not only with shorter focal lengths but also when I put longer focal lengths up to 200 millimeters on there that had no in, in uh, lens stabilization that I was able to still get very steady shots either for stills or for video. It also has Sony's active mode when in video that allows you to get some improvement to stability when hand holding video action shots. However, it's not going to replace a motorized gimbal for smooth shots when stepping. You can see a little bit of jerkiness as I step through some snow to try to get these shots. There has long been a debate over tilting screens versus the fully articulating screens, and Sony has solved that debate by giving you both. This screen can be tilted like Sony screens before, but it can also be fully articulated for either side use or for front monitoring. It's a really unique approach to solving this problem and gives photographers and videographers the best of both worlds. Unlike the A7R 4 we now have a fully functional touchscreen that allows you to do everything, including navigating menus, by touch. Also improved is the viewfinder, which goes from 5.7 million dots on the A7R 4 up to a whopping 9.44 million dots, making this the highest resolution in the class and up with the Sony Alpha 1 in terms of performance. Also improves is the viewfinder magnification, which moves from 0.78 times to 0.90 times. The resolution of the LCD screen is also improved. It's a little bit larger, 3.2 inches versus 3 inches, but it has also grown in resolution to 2.36 million dots instead of the 1.44 million dot resolution found on the A7R Mark IV. The ergonomics are highly similar to that of the A7 Mark IV with a similar uh, button placement and similar ports with the exception that we now have a full-size HDMI port which will be very welcome by those that do video work. The card slots have also been upgraded to now accept CF Express Type A cards along with UHS-2 rated SD cards giving you more flexibility in the high bit rates associated with both those buffer depth but also with video capture. On the video front, we now have the ability to record up to 8K 24p or 4K 60p, which is a definite improvement over what we saw on the A7R Mark IV. I found in real world use that while we have a similar sensor, there have been some improvements that have come. Uh, namely, we have a slight bit more dynamic range. I was able to successfully realize four stops of shadow recovery with almost no penalty and five stops with a minor amount of penalty. I was also able to recover up to about three stops with very little penalty of highlight recovery, which is a little bit better than what I typically see. According to Photons to Photos, we have a very slight improvement over the A7R Mark IV, but already this was one of the best dynamic range performances out there. If you're shooting in video and shooting S-Log3, 
Sony claims that you can get over 14 stops of dynamic range here. I also found that while there are some limiting factors that come with such high resolution when you do high ISO settings, I also found that I could get up to ISO 12800 with relatively little penalty. And what was interesting to me is that when I shot in MRAW, I basically alleviated almost all of the penalties that I could see with less noise, less color disc discoloration, anything like that. And so that certainly is a new option that the A7R 4 did not have, that if you're in a high ISO setting, you can shoot at a lower resolution level, even shooting RAW, and achieve a much clearer cleaner in result. Sony also claims to have improved auto white balance and I did find that to be the case. The AI learning helps to detect particularly when it comes to skin tones and there is an improved performance in mixed lighting to where I saw more consistent skin tones also with people of various ethnicities. So some definite progress in the right direction. At the end of the day the A7R Mark V is a camera that is basically improved on almost every level over its predecessor. It's not just that there are new technologies here, but I find a maturation of existing technologies to where they just work a little bit better here. There's a lot to praise and little to criticize, and when I tried to come up with just a few words to describe the A7R Mark V, they were words like complete and mature, and I believe that this is one of the more complete and mature cameras that you can find on the market right now. If you want more information, you can check out my definitive video review that will break down everything in detail or you can look in the description below and find linkage to my full text review also to an image gallery there as well. There are buying links there and also linkage to follow myself or Craig on social media. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.